Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. We are here in the Kodash Bazaar after our meeting with the princes. Let's have us a little... We're going to do our normal exploration of the outpost right after I pick up the quest here. From Royal Taster, Ren... Food Taster, Rendu. Ah, yes! Vaun the Vulnerable, Venerable, the unknown until now corn employee, has graciously rented out the Baca Amphitheater from none other than the esteemed Baca the Magnificent himself. He has a very special performance that he says will sweep Vabby by storm. He specifically has invited invitations for you for a rehearsal to the upcoming performance. Will you attend? I love theater. We need to talk to Kahani first, though. It sounds like a trap, I wonder. But I was talking about the foreshadowing. And this is actually mentioned in the previous mission when they were talking about um, a new Cornyn play coming. So this is the capital city of Vabi, and it's really cool. It's one of my favorite capital cities in the game. So we're probably going to take a little bit here and just have a little bit of an exploration. Considered the best market in Vabi where the rare, the strange, and the unique are all, are all for sale. If you can't get it here, it simply isn't worth getting here. All of Vabi trades, mingles, and gossips. I've always felt like, to a degree, when they got to Vabi, they ran out of steam because Vabi is feels kind of underdeveloped compared to the other regions, despite the fact that I think it looks the coolest. So here's like, there's like a little forge over here with an armor, there's some of those trade stalls we could see, some more water, plants all growing up these nice ornate rims, some more water features and this blue stone that's really cool. Some floating like towers uh, off and around the distance. Here's all the heroes and everything up here at the, the top, kind of. Come down to the other side. There's more like market stalls over here. With all the different kind of vendors and everything. There's like a almost like a palace back up there that we can't get into. Um. And then here's like a little like pathway around the back kind of pretty cool looking area like a little back street and there's some a couple little areas over here we can go look at real quick there's this little look out overlook here with like this little cliff and this area here that's pretty awesome and then we have a little look over here where there's randomly a chest and a portal over here I've never actually noticed this but it goes to Vitendi Valley interesting yeah just a little side entrance this main town is actually pretty cool in that it kind of spills out into the explorable area around it there's a lot of like parts of the bazaar and stuff that are around the bazaar, but not necessarily in the outpost. Kind of cool. Kind of wish they did more of that. It makes definitely makes it feel a lot bigger, a lot more alive. Let's go out into the mirror of Lis and go find Kahani before we make our way to the Cornyn Play. We might not even get to this play in this episode. We probably will, but there's quite a bit of areas to explore. Yeah, there's a little bit of it on this outside, but the other areas generally do a much better um, job. There's some like little tents out here in the wilderness. Some Vabiums walking around. Vabian guard. We're going up to meet Kahani at her, like, I think it's the temple. Or like a church, basically. There's some more of those plants and stuff that we haven't really seen since Istan. I think there's a couple of them in Korna, but generally Korna is more like wild beasts and stuff. The magical plants and stuff kind of make a return here. <laughs> also, something kind of interesting about Vabi is that the roadways in a lot of the explorable areas are relatively clear of mobs. Um... And it definitely makes it feel more inhabited. This is kind of a problem Guild Wars had, is where, it, to a degree, it just feels like the entire world is just full of monsters trying to kill each other. <laughs> and you. But 
this is a really cool area here. Um, I forget the exact name of it. We'll see whenever we go in then. It's like the, it's a sepulcher or something, but it's a, it's a, it's a temple to Lissa, basically. And a whole, there's this pond here and a whole bunch of different ornate architecture and stuff all around it. Let's go talk to Kahani. Prince Baka rented out his theater to some corn and upstart director. That just doesn't seem right. With Fresh's forces moving in, now the guys are protecting the princes. There might be more to this than meets the eye. When it comes to picking performances for his venue, Prince, Al Prince Baka is a persnickety one. It comes. It could be the perfect time to schmooze Baka into helping the Istani fight Varish. Good idea. Let's go see his lardness. But first, let's grab the outpost while we're here. Grand Court of S Sebelkin. That's what this place is called. Sebelkin. We'll come back here later, so I won't really spend a lot of time reading the outpost and stuff now. I'm just going to walk my way through. More of these carpet bridges, which again, super cool, but oh my gosh, must it be annoying to walk over wet carpet, flying wet carpet. <laughs> That sounds wrong. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, this is cool. I think this is the first one of these we see, but this is like a something they would carry royals in. It's got pillows here and stuff for them to chill on while someone pulls them along. Let's keep on going this way. A little bit more of the kind of wilder area. There's a cool little, like, Vabian town out here in the, the wilds. A Jahai rat up there. That'd be another pet we could get. Uh, we could have gotten Margaret. Here's some roaring ethers. These are mesmers. And these are, like... This is another thing that is kind of native to Vabby. Kind of, like... Vabby, a lot of the enemies are very much magical in nature. Um, you have stuff like these, these gins, the plants, these roaring ethers. Um, even though they don't specifically mention it, you kind of get the idea that Vabby is a bit more magical than the other uh, regions. Or at least I always got the impression that Vabby was a bit more magical than the other regions. to Honor Hill. Oh, one thing that's interesting is we they mentioned these three princes, like, whatever you want to call them, castles, palaces, whatever, wherever they reside. Only one of them is actually a um, outpost. A lot of them are explorable areas, which is kind of cool. It means they're out there in the open world, kind of. Um, or not open world, but in the world. And it creates kind of a cool dynamic that does make Vabby feel a little bit more like completely safe because there's large areas in the explorable areas that are safe from um you know mobs and stuff let's read honor hill a ragtag community of artists actors and other unsavory types <laughs> the natives of honor hill make their living Fleecing wealthy patrons on their way to the Baca Amphitheater. If you need a reproduction statue of Grenth or some fake memoirs of a Prince of Abbey, the Merchants of Honor Hill will be happy to oblige you. Otherwise, hold on to your purse with both hands and walk fast. <laughs> so, it's Hollywood. Kind of cool. A little, like, a uh, town. Not quite as opulent, obviously, you can tell, as the, the Grand Bazaar. A lot more, like, rugged. The lack of, like, the blue stone. The blue stone is pretty much kind of like a symbol of the wealth in Vabby or, like, the gold caps on top of stuff. I, I lied. We will be getting to this quest today. 
But we are on our way, Resplendent Mancoon, we are on our way to the Baca Amphitheater. And this is like Baca's palace, it's a big lavish palace. So let's have us a little look-see. There's like a cave back there. I've never been back in here. What's back in here? Yeah, this is cool. This is like a big indoor cave with a... Looks like some a little village or something back in there. Kind of cool. So let's go on into the, the palace. This place is pretty big and pretty cool, but there's not really much to do here. It's kind of like one of my... One of the things I don't necessarily like a ton is there's not a lot to do a lot of times in these cool places. That's an interesting statue on that side. There's that, uh, a wyvern. Art of a wyvern. This place could be a little bit of a maze, so I'm kind of hoping I know where I'm, I remember where I'm going. It's just in my subconscious somewhere. I think we're going this way. We had a Prince Valka. There might be a couple quests and stuff to do here, but... Do to do, do Vabian nobles and all kinds of individuals. All kinds of named characters, actually. A lot of named characters here. Which is pretty interesting. Normally, I wonder if these are people. Like, if these are people who worked on stuff for their anagrams for people or something, like... Because there's a lot of people here with specific names, and I'm, I don't think they have any reason to have specific names besides just they wanted to do it. So just calling them, you know, Vabian Noble or whatever. So here is Prince Baca's, like, palace room with these big couches and big pillows and stuff on them. What's out here? Is this just like a, uh, a balcony? Yeah. Oh, there's one of those floating garden. They're called floating gardens. I believe that's what they're called. Well, those over there. Pretty cool. Let's talk to the prince. Mancun is the highlight of Vabi, is it not? Those wealthy enough to pay for the privilege may spend their lives here, enjoying the theater, food, and all the pleasures of life without a care in the world. We'll be safe under Varesh's guard for the amount of platinum that this venerable fellow paid me for private use of my amphitheater. I could use some extra protection. Too bad the Astai drained their coffers on that fool's errand of an attack. If anyone to do, anyone with two dies could see that that was bound to fail. Enough talk of business come. Let's make haste to my amphitheater. We're just in time to witness this very special advanced performance. and Introduce yourself to Vagoon. Okay, well, I guess we're, uh, I guess we're going to the play. The Baca Amphitheater. Oh, they're dressed up like um, characters from Prophecies. And they give us a little a little rewrite of the Prophecies story as their play. Let's see if we can... I actually want to see if we can see behind this. Yeah, there's like more commoner buildings over there. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's talk to Wagner the Venerable. Good days to you, my old friend. It is always pleasant to see a friendly face. Let me just flag the heroes away. And a familiar one like yours is even more pleasant. Wait, who are you again? What's the story about? Well, I don't want to write something about a hero overcoming any odds or any succeeding in the end. I guess you could say it's a traditional tragedy of epic proportions. It'll take your breath or away if or when you get to the end. <laughs> this guy doesn't seem very confident. All right. Here we go. Let's read this play. Our story begins in the far-off land of Tyria, in the Grand City of Ascalon many years ago. We find our hero desperately scouring the countryside search of gifts for his beautiful fiance. But all was not well in the land of Ascalon. Evil had turned its eye to Tyria and sought to sow dissent. A sequence of events was set in motion that would lead to the fall of a great metropolis. Events was dire had struck Ascalon and left it reeling, but the prince knew what he must do, and he was not afraid. Let's cross the mountains and go to Krita. They don't have char there. Like, roar. Have at ye, scoundrel. Like, ouch. <laughs> Quickly, my fellow Ascalon, we must depart while we still have our legs. They don't have char in Krita. 
My son Merkel displays you no longer Prince of Ascalon. You no longer Merkel's son. <laughs> Merkel seems a little bit uh a little bit stupid if uh <laughs> Yeah. As a boy I spent much time in these lands, oh god, not that line. Look at them now, just look at them. How predictable <laughs> Prince Waka says. <laughs> like ouch. <laughs> So striking off in search of his destiny and a new home for his people, the prince traveled across the Shiver Peak Mountains and headed towards Kryda. The journey was difficult, long, and somewhat boring, but they persevered until the stone summit would not yield the frost gate quietly. Your punishment for trespassing is death. Death, I say. Um, line. <laughs> It's you cannot save me. <laughs> Man, these guys aren't very good, are they? I like Mer I like a uh, Mergle and the Valley Girl Char though. They got they got personality. And so the prince valiantly laid down his life for his people. I had to remember that being in my copy of the script. Stop improvising, you troll. This play is utter tripe. Damn, even if Baka if Baka doesn't like your play, that's 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 bad. <laughs> Arnold, time for plan B. Plan B? What's plan B? Merkel like plan B. Merkel like smash. Smash. Uh-oh. And then the valiant Cornans smote the Estonian interlopers with a righteous fury. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> this is my favorite part. Oh, great. <laughs> Can I go to the play <laughs> once without it being turning into a, a, a murder fest? This happened last time I was in New York as well. Oh my, this is not good, not good at all. Verish must have changed your mind and must hurry to the safety of Adashim. Okay. Now let's head back to Honor Hill and talk to Royal Finance Minister Olda. How embarrassing. The esteemed Prince Baka sends his apologies. He has since made haste to safer grounds, but left this with me to give to you. Okay. So Prince Baka has run off to somewhere called Adashim. Um, so maybe we'll learn what that's about soon. But that's going to be all for today's episode. I want to thank you for coming out, and I hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.